Senator Deacon, Nova Scotia. Thank you, Speaker. Colleagues, today is World Intellectual Property Day. It's established by the UN's World, Organ World Intellectual Property Organization to build awareness of how patents, copyrights, trademarks, and designs impact daily life and to celebrate the economic and social contributions of creators and innovators. I want to focus on this second point, the contribution of IP to the Canadian economy. Intangible assets such as IP, data, and software now make up over 90% of the S&P's market value. In the 1970s and 80s, physical assets were overwhelmingly valued, things like natural resources and land. That world is no longer. Today, investors look for companies that control valuable IP and data. They use those assets to control markets and capture su superior economic rents from the work of others all around the globe. Think of the global efforts to control natural resources and land, and you have some sense of the battle that is currently raging to control intangible assets like IP. Those who control crucial IP can control access to markets and information. But globally, Canada has not yet, yet adjusted to this highly technical, highly strategic global transformation. Consider that about half of the patents that are protected, or that protect Canada's publicly funded IP, are transferred to foreign owned entities once issued. As a result, that research creates opportunity and wealth elsewhere in the world. The annual gross income earned from the IP licensed by Canadian universities produces a one, paltry 1.3% 1 return on the $7 billion invested annually through university-based research in Canada. We are investing in research, but without a modern strategy to protect and grow its economic value for the benefit of Canadians. Some believe that in a strategy of incentivizing foreign-owned tech giants to build IP branch plants or research facilities in Canada. But again, the resulting IP leaves our country and creates wealth elsewhere. Former, Google's, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt thanked Canada for the talent and IP that now underpins its business model. Some celebrated. I did not. Canada's IP problem results from a policy belief system that assumes that investments in research automatically convert into opportunity and wealth. This misconception has been sustained through the Conservative and Liberal governments who've each led our country for similar periods over the last 40-year period, where Canada's living standards have declined steadily in relative terms. This trend is projected to continue unless we change. We can turn this around quickly. We have the talent, but I fear that our investments in research will continue to diminish unless we finally implement a coordinated strategy that converts our IP Yes, into Canadian jobs, but even more importantly, into Canadian opportunities and Canadian prosperity. Thank you, colleagues.